Hi, I'm Aaron Brooker, agronomist for Michigan and Northern Indiana, and harvest is about wrapped up here in the state. We've got a few lingering fields out there, uh, but for the most part, uh, harvest has come along quite early this year, and it's been another year uh, where we've seen some really good corn grain yields uh, across most of the state outside of a few pockets. Really, the last couple of years, we've had some really uh, good corn yields, and so what I want to talk about today is managing our soil nutrition, our, our plant fertility going into next year, given some of the high yields that we've seen. And really that comes back to our soil tests and how much we're fertilizing. So I'm gonna throw the tri-state fertilizer recommendation, uh, kind of the soil levels here for that, this would apply to phosphorus and potassium mostly, but you have this kind of maintenance range where we wanna manage our fertility levels within. Uh, at the low end of this range is that critical level. So below this critical level is where we're more likely to start to see yield losses due to nutrient deficiencies. Kind of at the top end of this range um, is where maybe we'll manage to the top of that to keep those fertility levels up. But beyond these, these higher levels, we're not necessarily expecting to see yield increases above that. So Typically when I work with farmers, uh, the fields that we own, the where we've been able to apply nutrients uh, at a at a reasonably uh, decent level over the last few years. A lot of times we'll manage those more toward that higher level, but then some of those rented acres, or if you've been impacted by some of the high fertilizer prices over the last couple of years, sometimes we're managing a little closer to that critical level. And that's where I really wanna to focus today is if you have been managing there at that critical level, how many nutrients have we pulled off given these high crop yields that we've seen in the last couple of years? So if it's been a couple of years since your last soil sample, it's maybe a good time to get back out there and test these fields, see where these levels are at. Or if you're a year or two out from that sample and you're not kind of back in that rotation for that field to sample it again, you do need to go back and look at the crop yields and see how much fertility the, the bushels that you got did pull out. So uh, looking at the nutrient removal rates for corn and soybeans now, uh, you can see, uh, basically you can do a calculation here, how many bushels you produced and roughly how many pounds of phosphorus and potassium that crop required to get the yields that you've got. And so as we think about maybe you fertilize every other year, maybe you fertilize every year, but if your sample is a year or two old, uh, you need to make sure that we're accounting for these crop removal rates when we go into next year to make sure we're not running into deficiency issues moving forward. The other thing I wanna talk about is the residue. So with these high corn yields, uh, it's likely that we're dealing with a little more residue, a little bit more stock and leaf matter uh, laying out there in the field. And so that does need to break down over time. And the fungi, bacteria, the microbes that break that down typically will pull nutrients from the soil uh, to be able to do that, especially early in the season as we think about next year. And so a lot of times if we're in a corn on corn situation, we often think about 20 or 30 extra units of nitrogen to be able to break that residue down while also still supplying enough nutrients to get that crop up and up and going and, and still achieve high yields uh, if we're in that corn on corn situation. Uh, with residue management, the, the sooner we can break that down, the, the better off we're going to be uh, so that we're not pulling nutrients out of the soil all season long next year. And you can even uh, maybe cycle some of that back into the crop if this residue isn't lingering all of next season too. So I'll also share a video that I, I sent out a couple of months ago on residue management, a few PFR tactics that we've seen to be that we've had some success with. Um, some of those are uh, spray applied type products that I don't think will have much value at this point in the season just due to the the temperatures that we're going to be running into here. So um, anything we can do to physically break up that residue at this point in the year, uh, if you have that ability to do that, is probably going to help uh, just expedite that, that process, make it easier to plan into, get those soil to warm up faster, but also to speed up that nutrient cycling going into the following season. So... If you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out, but this is something uh, that's going to be important as we go into next year, thinking about these nutrient rates, uh, the nutrients that are in our soil, making sure that we're not falling into deficiency issues going into next year because of the really good yields that we've seen the last couple of years.